Request for box scores in the back corner. You guys want to run into the other room and just grab a, there, hey, there we go. Power of amplified audio. I'm sure everybody saw this, but 16 points is the largest comeback in men's basketball championship game history. For North Carolina, we're going to be joined by Caleb Love. R.J. Davis. Puff Johnson. And Armando Baycott. North Carolina may or may not have additional availability outside their locker room tonight like they did the other night. We'll let you know when we know for sure. Almost certain Kansas will. If North Carolina has it, it's going to be in that breakout area where the breakout interviews have been on the practice days just because there's better space. But again, I'll let you know once uh, Kirshner lets us know. North Carolina is making its way here to the main interview room. I do. Thanks, Coach. Um, what happened to those Westwood guys? One of the guys. You, you want to start with the players and then Hubert can join? I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. That way we can get it done yeah. faster. Start with the players. I'll let Hubert join in here. Perfect. It sounds good to me. Hey, hey, are they not just there? Yeah, okay. Not available outside the office. I'll let everybody know. For student athletes and for Coach Davis, this will be the only availability. There's not going to be a post locker room scrum.
Once again, we'll be joined by Caleb Love, R.J. Davis, Puff Johnson, and Armando Baycott. They'll be here in just a moment, followed by Coach Davis. We'll get some student-athlete questions going first, and then we can start with questions uh, for Coach Davis if you guys have them when Coach arrives. Sounds good, Chris. Armando, would you, do, you, do you want to be on the end so you can extend, or do you want to be here because it's close? Got it. We're joined now by student athletes from North Carolina, Caleb Love, RJ Davis, Puff Johnson, and Armando Baycott. We'll take questions for them, and then we'll join Coach Davis in action when he gets here. Let's start with Aaron in the second row. Yeah. Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for Armando. What were the last 24 hours like as you were trying to make sure you were ready to play with treatments and whatever? And how, how did you feel coming into tonight? Yeah, I mean, the last 24 hours, probably 15 of them, it was me just trying to, you know, get my ankle better. And Doug Halverson and Jonas Aration, they did a great job of just preparing me for this moment. I mean, Right before the game, I really couldn't even jump, and then that's why I kind of went back, and we just kept trying to take a crack at it, and they didn't give up, and luckily, I mean, I was able to play 38 minutes. Up front on the right side, Pete. Uh, this is for our Armando, Puff, and Caleb. Uh, each of you had something happen to you during the game. Armando, you slipped late. Puff, you fell down, appeared to vomit, and, and Caleb, you looked like you tripped. I'm wondering if you could just walk me through those, those three things that kind of seemed to alter the game. Let's ask for Caleb first, then Puff, then Armando. Yeah, I was I was running down and, and I kind of twisted my ankle, rolled my ankle twice, and that's what happened. Puff. Um, during the game, I got hit in the stomach and just just didn't go well. Once I got hit in the stomach, and yeah, that's about it. Armando. I was just trying to drive to the basket and. I just kind of unconsciously tried to go up off my right foot, and then, and that was an ankle I had injured, and then I just rolled it again. Next question's in the third row center. Andrew Jones, Tar Heel Illustrator. For RJ and Caleb, they hit you guys with that 31 to 10 run to start the second half. What were they doing that you guys were unable to kind of avoid to, to maybe stop the run from continuing? Caleb first, then RJ, please. They were getting a lot of transition buckets. Um, they were getting getting a lot of points in our paint. Uh, it, it was they was just you know penetrating and and doing whatever they wanted to do. RJ. Um, <clears> they <throat> got a lot of transition buckets, uh, points in the paint. Um, that's really about it. Let's go to the fifth row on the left side, CL. CL Brown, Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, this is for you, Caleb. Uh, can you take me through that last play with the 4.3 seconds left when you guys have one more chance to tie? Was, was there a particular play called, or was it, you know, you, whoever got the ball was to try and make a play? Yeah, Coach Davis and Coach Frederick drew up a play for either Brady or me to get the ball, and then who, if that wasn't open, then it was whoever got the whoever got open, um, and so it was a kind of screen to get me open, and it was supposed to be a screen for me to get a flare. Uh, I got the ball and I took the shot and we came up short. We're going to the center of the room, toward the right side. Raise your hand, please. Isaac Shade, All Tar Heels. There was a stretch in the second half where uh, Kayla, where you started excuse me, taking over, bringing the ball up the court. Was that an intentional switch due to your ankle injury? No, nah, it was just to relieve pressure because um, they were pressuring the ball. Full court, it was denying RJ. So, uh, you know, I had, I had to get the, we had to get the ball in. We're on the right side, 
five rows back. Ross Martin, Inside Carolina. Uh, Armando, can you speak to the physicality of the game, banging down there with David McCormick and um, just how tough it was throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, all throughout the game, David, I mean, Coach Selfie did a good job of just trying to go at me, put me in different ball screens, and he was ducking in a lot, and it was definitely tough just because he's a bigger guy, and I really couldn't the whole game get the push on anything, on my post-ups, defensively, anything. It was just like I kind of was out there, and it was just hard for me to really – just stay on my ground. Yeah. Up front on the right side. Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Hubert, um, as soon as the game ended, you went straight over to Brady and sort of hugged him and consoled him. Just wondering what was, why it was important for you to do that and um, important to tell the rest of the guys in the locker room thereafter. <clears throat> it was important for me to do that because I love the players and I care for them. And they were very emotional and crying. and. That's my job is to support them and to care for them and to love them and to be there for them. And so it was nothing more than just caring for them. Left side, second row. Lauren Walls from WXII in Winston-Salem. This question's for Armando. Just what was the level of difficulty it took for you to play on that ankle all game? I mean, I don't think it was any difficulty. I mean, we all really wanted to win. We came this far and this was a huge goal for us was to just hang up a banner and, you know, we just really wanted to win and I really wouldn't let anything stop us from, you know, getting to that point and it didn't go to what we wanted, but I mean, I was fine. In the center of the room, let's get this gentleman a microphone. Raise your hand, please, so we can see you. Uh, Adam Smith, Burlington Times News. Caleb, you guys have come up with wins in so many tight games in the last month, two months. What was it like for it not to work out tonight, you know, on the biggest stage? And, and can you tell us maybe some about what the locker room was like afterwards, what you guys were dealing with and what y'all were feeling? Just, you know, it, it hurts um, for us to get this far and come up short like this, um, everything we went through. Um, but, you know, the positive thing is I wouldn't want to go through this with anybody else. Um, We have two questions, one row back. Hi, uh, PJ Morales, The Daily Tar Heel. This is for Coach Davis, uh, Armando, and Puff. Uh, Coach Davis, you talked a lot about the experiences that you wanted your players to have and how important an experience it was getting this far in the season and having, you know, having this kind of show of excellence. Now kind of on the other side of it a little bit, what, what, what do you think has been the most important thing in terms of experiencing what you experienced this weekend and throughout the tournament? Coach Davis. Well, I did. You know, I, I, I said that, you know, and I told them this after the game that my desperation for them to have those experiences in a Carolina uniform was very important for me. And I was very thankful that I feel like this year they were able to have a, not just, they were able to have a number of experiences um, that they could grab on and to lean on and to smile about. Um, the thing that I, shared with them in the locker room is along the way as they were experiencing it, they were giving me more stories and testimonies and memories by just having a front row seat to be around them. And so um, I, I said before that, you know, I can't remember a time in my life where I should be disappointed, but I'm just filled with so much pride. I'm so proud of these guys of what they have done for themselves individually as a team, the way that they have represented our university, this program, our community. I can't ask for them to do any more than what they have done. And I am, I am extremely proud of each one of them. In the center of the room, same area. Yeah, Hunter Nelson from the Daily Tar Heel. So in the second half, a lot of you guys are missing shots that you had been hitting really all tournament. And after playing in, I guess, four, all-time classic game, so to speak. How much did fatigue play into that? And what were your adjustments that you had to make? Caleb, can you take that one first? I mean, you know, it was national championship. Um, I don't think anybody was thinking about being tired. Uh, we were just trying to go out there and do whatever we had to do to get the win. And it was just unfortunate that we came up short. RJ. Uh, we were just trying to remain positive when, you know, things weren't going that way. Uh, shots weren't 
uh, we, the shots that we usually make, uh, we're missing coming up short. And, you know, we just told it, everyone just told each other just to stay together. And there was a lot of time left, but. Um, Our next, sorry, RJ. Our next question is all the way in the back of the room on the left, David. Armando, David Teal from the Richmond Times Dispatch. With about 38 seconds to go, you're, you're hopping down the court on your only good leg. How much pain are you in at that point? Do you know you cannot go anymore? And just what's going through your mind? Yeah, I mean, I thought I made a good move. And I mean, I thought I really got the angle that I wanted. I mean, I thought it would have been an easy basket. And then I just rolled my ankle as I was going up. And then I think we were down like two points. And it was a four on five. And I was just trying to get back and do whatever I could. Just even if I was just a contested shot to do whatever. but. I mean, I really struggled. I couldn't really put any weight down on my right leg. And I don't know. I mean, right then and there, I probably knew I was done at that point. Toward the back of the room on the right side, sir, could you raise your hand so we can see you? Yeah. Thank you. David Thompson, USA Today Network. The, this question's for Coach Davis. You talked about pride. Um, you know, what are the emotions also that you feel when you watch the performance of Romando and the way just kind of he gutted it out all game? Well, it was not just tonight. The the type of season that Armando has had. I, I've had the privilege of seeing all of his hard work that he did in the off season that put himself in a position to be successful this year. I've seen the commitment that he has had and the desperation for him to make this team successful. You know, the first couple of years, and, and I told Armando this, that I just felt bad for him, you know, because he's such a great kid and an unbelievable player. In the first two years, I just didn't think he had that Carolina experience. And not going to the NCAA tournament his freshman year, we had a losing record. Then we lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year. And his decision to come to North Carolina was to be a part of um, – the great history of this program. And I, I really wanted that for him. And it's not just his effort tonight. The effort tonight that he displayed, he's done it all year consistently. And that's why he's one of the better players in the country. Toward the back on the right side, Pat. Yeah, uh, Hubert, Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. I was just wondering uh, if you could tell me what Mannix's uh, assignment was on that last play, if he was going to the opposite side for a three over there, and yeah. then just <clears throat> how you, you'll feel with the number of guys that went down and how they tried to battle through various maladies and problems today. Yeah, the, the play was for him to get, get a um, baseline screen and we're supposed to throw it to him. Um, it looked like he was going to be open, throw it to the opposite corner, but he stumbled. And so it threw the play totally off. I think he would have been open. The first option was for him to shoot the three. And then we had Caleb coming off of another screen on the backside um, that was going to be set by Justin McCoy. But because Brady tripped, it just, just messed up the play. And um, Caleb shot a great shot. It just didn't go in tonight. Next question is for Aaron in the second row, right side. Yeah, Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for Puff. Kind of walk us through a little bit your mentality tonight when they needed you, when Leakey got in foul trouble. and. You hit some big shots, you drew a charge, you really came through with some valuable minutes for them. Uh, my whole thing this uh, whole year has been just to stay ready whenever your number is called. And I mean, I can honestly just say that uh, I gave it everything I had and that's what I try to do each and every game and each and every day in life. And I came into the Final Four with a little bit of a banged up hip flexor from what happened earlier in the season. It was just re-aggravated a little bit. And I can honestly just say I just gave it everything I had. Next question is for CL, midway back on the left side. CL Brown, this is, question is for uh, Coach Davis and uh, for any of the players who want to answer. Coach, this being your first year at the helm, um, what would you say you kind of learned about yourself going through this season as a coach? and? Similar question for any of the players. What, what did you learn from this experience in terms of what it takes to get to a Final Four to win a national championship, compete for one? Well, I've, you know, I said before, you know, there's a, there's a number of things going through my mind right now. And 
even though that the whole season has been, you know, filled with with so many blessings, it's it's been so busy. I haven't I haven't had time to really process and think fully what has happened. CL, I will say this: I I like not I like I love what I'm doing. I just. Um, I love being the head coach at the University of North Carolina and coaching these kids. And RJ, can you take that one as well? And Armando. Uh, it takes a whole band. You know, we've been together this whole year. Um, and we made this far for a reason. Um, you know, this team was special. I'm, you know, glad to share memories and uh, big games, you know, that we'll all talk about and cherish forever. I mean, we've, you know, been through a lot this year faced adversity, overcome it, um, and all of our hard work that we put in through the off season, the summertime, you know, preseason, uh, you know, brought us to this, you know, point where we're at. Armando. Yeah, I mean, I would just say this season has been successful. I mean, just having Coach Davis as a coach, he's been amazing all year. And I mean, everybody in our coaching staff has been great. And just this program, we've all loved being here all year and just playing for Coach Davis. And this won't be the last time y'all see this program here. We'd like to thank Caleb, RJ, Puff, Armando, and Coach Davis. Congratulations on a great season and outstanding postseason. And we thank you for your time in here all week. Okay, thank you. Can somebody help Armando get down? Okay. Somebody help Armando get down. Thank you very much. that are coming. Travis. How's it going? Good. 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 Nice to see you. Uh, Uncle Jesse, where are you? Uh, I need a handheld. We're bringing seven Kansas players plus Coach Self. So we got to do like uh, like the All Star or like the Hall of Fame thing the other day. Do you, want me to, do you want me to do it like this? Sure. Uh, I think back left. I think uh, she can work the whole left side.
What do you want to put down here? One, two, three, four, five. Four on each side of the room. Yeah, I don't want to put codes on it because it needs a background, right? put coach on the end because then you'll lose the, the camera yeah. angle be off. So do you want coach on the end? What if we put uh, down here? I, I wiped everything. So you want to put him at? I don't want to put him at the end. I, I think you just put him in the middle. Me, yeah, give me a player. I'll put. Which which handheld do you have? I'm not going. I'm not going here. I'll stand over here. Chase, this is okay over here. All right, we're going to be joined by. Uh, seven student athletes from Kansas plus coach self, Christian Brown, Dewan Harris, Jalen Wilson, Remy Martin, Ochai Abaji, David McCormick, and Mitch Lightfoot. I'm going to do my best Oprah and stand over here with the handheld, uh, and I'll be able to see you guys, but we only have three microphone stewards. Then we'll have two on this side and we'll have one on this side. kicking it over. Well, that's why I can take it out if you think you're good. <laughs> I just didn't want to give it to one of the kids last year. Have them start drinking it. <laughs> just a reminder, take this opportunity, please, to silence your cell phone. I'm going to make sure mine's silent as well. Please turn your flash off. You can take photos, but no video. You can't go live. You can always post your photos later. I know it'll be good photos. On occasion, uh, we have the championship trophy down here as well. In the interest of uh, the fire code, maybe we shouldn't have it today, but we'll see how it goes. Jen Rogers, are you still here? Okay. If there's a Zoom question, I, I mean, we're going to, I'm sure we'll have uh, plenty, but if there's a Zoom question, let me know. Like, come and tap me or whatever. We had one from in the last one, but it was from Philly, and I didn't feel like Philly was important. I felt like the triangle was important. I'm glad you agree. Rob and Dave, if I'm here, am I in your way? Okay. Yeah. 
Zach, if you have a question, you're going to have to lean. Okay. I'll get, I'll get you first. What's that? Uh, I know it's 16 tonight. It's the new record. I didn't see any. I didn't see any contact. Did anybody get? I know 16 was the largest comeback victory in the men's championship game. What was the prior? Loyola in 1963 is a 15-point deficit. Okay. Kansas is on the move. They're headed here. National champions have arrived. We're joined now by student athletes from Mike, Mike. Kansas Mike, National Mike. Championship basketball players Christian Brown, Dewan Harris, Jalen Wilson, Remy Martin, Ochai Abaji, David McCormick, and Mitch Lightfoot. The trophy is here as well, and we'll get Coach Self as soon as he's ready. We're going to start with questions for the student athletes. Let's go up front on the right side. Shea Wildeboard, JayhawksLand.com. For any couple of you guys, down 15 at the half, what was the message? And for you guys, what was the key to the second half to remain patient and um, kind of chip away um, at that lead? We'll ask Ochai to take that and Mitch. Uh, I would say, you know, it kind of just it kind of uh, took us back to when we were at K-State. Um, the message, I mean, was obviously different. Coach was, he obviously challenged us and, you know, he was amped up in there. But it was just a matter of us playing our game and executing in the second half and uh, taking away what they were, you know, what they were getting at in the first, in the first half. Mitch. Um, I would say, I said this uh, a couple days ago in, in media, with, with a group of guys as experienced as this and that have been around, and uh, know each other so well, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see see them us get rattled. And uh, I think we uh, bounced back at halftime. Coach had a great message for us, and uh, he challenged us to be better and uh, to have some to have uh, more pride. And uh, we did that. Next question is going to be for Matt from the Lawrence Journal World. Matt Tate, Lawrence Journal World. Uh, I'm just curious what what sparked that in the second half. Coach said you really got after him there, and and I wonder if it there was something specific, and also if you saw how it affected North Carolina. It was Dewan. Um, Dewan, he, he sparked that in the second half. Coach said it in the locker room right there. Um, just his defensive pressure uh, kind of just rubbed off on everyone else. Uh, and then that's, that's where we got that momentum from on the defensive end and, and everything else, uh, you know, fell in place on the offense. Dewan, what does that make you feel like when you hear that? Uh, really, I just wanted to go. I, mean, I didn't want to lose. You know, this is my, my last. I, when I came to college, I came to college with them besides Remy. So I just wanted to give him my all for them. That's all it was. On the right side of the room, Mike, we're going to use that front right microphone. Yeah, this is for David. Um, what does it feel like for you to score the last two baskets of a championship game after oh, all the things you've been through in your career, the criticism, the injuries that you've had to fight through? Can you sort of capsulize what, all, what that means to you? Um, it's just uh, it was a big play, and it shows how much trust Coach and my teammates have in me. Um, you know, Coach called to play and said that we're going to throw it inside, and you know we have trust in you and faith in you for you to uh, deliver and get us a basket. And I really, um, I just prevailed and I made the basket happen. I just uh, appreciate them for allowing me to uh, have that opportunity. On that, uh, on, on this, on the first of those two, when you got the offensive rebound, and both Armando and Brady were on you, you didn't hesitate to go back up. I mean, you had three open teammates, four open teammates at that point, but you went right back up. Can you, can you talk about why you were able to finish that play? 
Um, game's on the line. You got adrenaline pumping. If you got a desire, you're going to go get it. You know, I snatched a rebound with two hands. The coach talks about just keeping the ball high and going right back up. Um, and that's the only thing that was going through my mind. I'm right here. I, we work on touch shots every day. I'm able to use both hands when I get a quick basket and get back on uh, defense. Coach, let's ask you to give us a statement here, and then we'll get back into some questions. Is the trophy angle OK on the camera? There we go. Sorry. Hate to have you guys part with that so soon. But go ahead, Coach. Statement. Uh, uh, I think we're probably all a little overwhelmed and spent. And, uh, I don't know that I've ever had a team flip the script like we have probably in the NCAA tournament, uh, whether it be Miami in the lead eight or, or whether it be uh, this game. But, but uh, you know, be special to win regardless. Uh, but to win when your team had to fight and come back the way they did uh, uh, and show that much grit uh, makes this one uh, off the charts. I, I thought this would be good. And this is a heck of a lot better than I thought it would be. We're going to take another question up front on the left. Zach. Yeah, Zach Boyer from the Lawrence Journal World. Uh, Christian, I'm wondering for you, you had the assignment on Love there in the last four seconds, uh, and he's taken that three. What's going through your mind at that point? How do you defend him? And what do you see now when he misses the rim? Yeah, we were uh, switching everything, and I switched on to him. Uh, we were trying to make him, you know, obviously uh, take a two. Um, and then it was just me and him one on one. Um, I thought I thought I got a pretty good hand up, um, and it looked short, you know, from when he shot it. Um, when I turned around, it was short. So, um, you know, when it came off, it felt good. Back right of the room, Zach. Uh, Zach Brazil of your post. David said out out there at halftime he was smiling. It was kind of like you know just do what we do, and but that kind of guys were looking at him weird that he he was despite the deficit, he was encouraged. What did you guys think of kind of his reaction to? where you guys were at that point. Zach, you want to direct that to? Any of the guys. Uh, Ocha, you want to respond? Um, wait, I was going to say, go ahead. See, I looked directly at sure Yeah, yeah, I was, it was me, definitely. He was looking at me. And I'm like, why are you smiling, dude? Like, we're down 15. Uh, and he's telling me, like, man, like, keep your head up. Like, keep going. We'll be all right. We've been here before. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I've ever been here before. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now 15 in the national championship game, I've definitely never been there. So. Man, uh, but we're just proud of him, and you know he, you know he kept us going, and then obviously uh, hit a really big shot. On the right side toward the front, Jeff. Jeff Porzello, ESPN. Uh, Bill, after the Miami comeback, you said your your halftime speech was mostly. I told them we need to play better. Uh, did you just kind of run that inspiration back today at halftime, or did you, what did you say? There wasn't much inspiration. Uh, I did tell them before the. Uh, the half was over, I said, which would be harder, being down nine with two minutes left or being down 15 with 20? And they all said being down nine with two minutes left. I said, so this, we can do this and, and, uh, because that's the way it was in 08. So, uh, and, you know, we, we, we got, what did we get? Three or four stops in a row to start the half and 15 went to nine like that and it was anybody's game. So uh, uh, it was pretty special how, how Juan triggered that uh, start the second half. Third row on the left side. Coach, Sam Lance with 24-7 Sports. You said you've talked to your dad more in the past couple months than you have, uh, you know, whenever he was alive. Did he say anything to you well, during or after this one? Well, when I, I, I said that, you know, I talked to my dad a lot when he was, when he was alive, but, but uh, not as much as he wanted me to. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was... Uh, the thing about the way, and, and, and so many, uh, uh, you know, parents that are eight, my age, uh, you know, grew up with families that lived through the Depression and the Dust Bowl and everything else. And so uh, he always felt that, uh, you know, nothing was ever given. Everything had to be earned. And so uh, I think he would be very proud of this team uh, because he knows without question they earned what happened tonight. And you wanted to follow up, so let's keep that yeah, mic on. I, I also wanted to ask you about Ochai really fast. Is he the most accomplished player that you've ever coached and maybe in Kansas basketball history? No, he's not in Kansas basketball history. I, I, gotta, I can't say that. I, I think Danny was pretty good, too. And, and, uh, uh, but he's second. They're, 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 I, 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 he's, the, he's the most accomplished player that we have had at our university since Danny. I mean, to think that four years – win the national championship, win the league, uh, uh, win, the, win the Big 12 tournament, uh, win the uh, uh, NCAA tournament to be a most outstanding player. Uh, 
we've never had anybody. We may have had some guys that had comparable years, but never had anybody uh, cap it off like what he has other than D. Up front, center, USA Today. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Scott Cleason with USA Today. You'd said earlier, you know, that one's not enough as far as championships go. I was hoping you could put into perspective what this means for a program, you know, that demands and really craves championships. Well, you know, uh, you know, these don't, these don't fall off trees. I mean, they're, they're hard to get. And so, uh, you know, the first one we got and it was great and everything. And we knocked on the door since then, but hadn't been able to punch the ticket, so to speak. So, uh, I, I think when, when, when the, when there's an all-time winningest program, when uh, 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 just by a slim margin, though, and when the inventor of the game was your first coach, and when the likes of Adolph Rupp comes from Kansas and Dean Smith comes from Kansas and Wilt Chamberlain comes from Kansas, the expectations are such where being good is okay, but it's not enough. And so nobody's ever put pressure on me. we got to win another one. But I think I put pressure on myself knowing that this place deserves more than what we've won. About six rows back on the right side. Lane, right in front of you. There we go. Hey there. Um, obviously, Kansas has had some famous miracles in the past with, you know, Mario's miracle and also Danny and the miracles. And, you know, obviously, there wasn't really one player tonight that stood out and, you know, got it done for the team. And Coach Self, I was wondering if you could. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you. Were, uh, what was that again? I'm sorry. No, it's OK. Um, so Kansas has had a fair amount of miracle teams with Danny and the miracles and Mario's miracle. Yeah, uh -huh. And, I, you know, I don't know if any one player gets the name after no. it for this game, but I'm wondering if you could talk about how that's maybe different than, you know, previous Kansas teams have been and that this was such a balanced Well, you, you know, when, when Rio, the, he made the shot and it was Mario, Mario's miracle and, you know, it's, it's stuck, but Darrell Arthur was actually the best player in that game, you know, but Mario gets all the credit which he deserves for making the shot. I think all seven of these guys would be totally content after being around them all year long that this is a 2022 miracle. Uh, uh, I don't. I think they would. I think they'll enjoy it more, not having a name attached to it, because that's how we played all year long. Up front in the center. Hey, uh, this is for Coach and a couple of players. Does this championship kind of fill the void from from 2020? I know you know during the week we talked about um, not being able to play yeah. with that with that team uh, because of COVID. But does this kind of fill a little bit of that void that you all didn't get a chance to, you know, kind of do but, it? And then secondly. For the players, are y'all ready to run it back again? Well, you, you need to ask a new group of players. Most of these guys will be gone <laughs> next year. Uh, 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 but, uh, you know, with the 2020, uh, I think in 2020 we would have sold out on winning one whenever it was before 22. So uh, I, I, I don't know that this to, – to me, uh, Devon was here tonight. Doak couldn't be here, Marcus couldn't be here, and Isaiah couldn't be here. But, but uh, to me, this was partially one for them, too. I don't know how you guys feel. Uh, it's partially one for them. So uh, because uh, uh, I always thought the 2020 team was better, uh, more equipped to do well in the NCAA tournament. Uh, after the way these kids have played the last uh, month, I, I think this team can play with any team that Kansas has ever put on the floor. Up front to the right, Kansas City. Gary Bedor, uh, Oach, Bill just said a lot of nice things about you. You also were MVP of this whole thing. What's your reaction to being MVP of the tournament or the Final Four and what about what Coach said about Danny and you and all that? Uh, you know, he, he talked to me um, about it, obviously, you know, on the podium here, uh, there just then and then in the podium when we are in uh, – uh, in Chicago, um, but I wouldn't say you know winning the winning the most outstanding player of this. Uh, I don't really care because we won the national championship. Um, but if I really had a most outstanding player throughout the whole entire you know Final Four, it'd be David. Um, he's been my guy. We got here. We got here. You know at the same time and. Um, you know, these goals and these dreams, you know, that we're living right now, we never would have thought of, you know, uh, when we first set foot on campus, but now living it and, you know, living it with him and, and uh, you know, leaving here with, with, uh, with history and history in our name, it just means so much to, to the both of us and obviously Mitch and all the guys here. So, On the right side, just to the left of the aisle. 
right where right where you're at. Uh, Sean Paul at the field of 68. Mitch, you played six years of college basketball with Kansas. Can you describe your feelings now that it's over, your college career is done? How are you feeling that you ended it with a national title? Wow. Um, what, a way to, what a way to go out. I'm so, so happy for these guys, so happy for Coach, so happy for, uh, for Kansas, uh, our fans. It just means the world to, to, to them. And uh, as far as six years of college, I figure you stay around long enough and you, you're, uh, you're bound to, you're bound to get, get one. So, no, I was, uh, I was uh, super blessed to be a part of this group. Um, just getting to see these guys work day in and day out means the world to me. Um, I was glad we were able to get one. In the back toward the right side. Remy, this is for you. Uh, Two-part question. First of all, can you talk about your journey coming here and playing with these guys? And then tonight's performance by you in the second half. You hit three big threes, big defensive play as well, too. And what propelled you to just uh, be able to, to come in there, take those shots with confidence? Uh, yeah, I mean, this year has been you know, uh, a tough year individually for me. Um, just injuries and, and just, you know, uh, you know, hard to find a groove sometimes. But, you know, it feel, it feel great, man. These guys have been amazing throughout the whole process. They've always, you know, kept me going and they always, you know, gave me confidence and I uh, couldn't ask for a better group. And the second half, um, I just came in there, try to, you know, make something happen and shot, shot the shots with confidence and um, just try to make plays. You know, DeWan, you know, did a great job and the team did a great job of, you know, getting that lead back. And I just didn't want the deficit to, to change. I wanted to, you know, keep going and extend that lead. And um, I'm happy that we did that. Back to the room on the right side. Steve Hall, Global Basketball. This question is for David McCormick. After trailing about 15 points, what was the turning point that you knew you had a chance to win? Um, honestly, I didn't see it as a turning point. Uh, like I said before, I was in the locker room just telling the guys, like, just believe in yourself, like, have fun with it. It's our last game regardless. If you, you know, you do what you need to do, because uh, that's how we got here in the first place. Don't, don't doubt yourself. And then we came out second half. Juan dictated the game on defense, and everybody else just follows suit. I mean, he's a floor general. Um, he can lock up anybody on the court, and um, he just came out with great energy, and we followed the same way. They were talking about you. They said nice things. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Love you, Juan. <laughs> up front to the left. This will be our last question. Any additional requests have to go through Chris Tyson. National Championship SID, Chris Tyson. Deshaun Tate from the three-point conversion. Congratulations to you guys, first of all. Um, this question is for Coach. This obviously puts you in a different echelon, a different conversation in terms of coaches that are active and those that are not, that have won multiple national championships. How much going into this game was that on your mind and just your overall thoughts on winning your second? Uh, you know, that, that wasn't on my mind, but, but uh, you know, I, I do feel that as many good teams as we've had over time, that uh, we could have had more than one. So uh, uh, even though, uh, like I said earlier, I don't, I, I never felt pressure from anybody that we had to do this. But I, 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 I knew with what we've had that we could have very easily done more. So I, I, I actually think it's, it means a lot to me. And 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 this year. You know, I, I don't know how these guys feel about me, but uh, I've never felt more connected to a group than I have this year. And, and when you go through stuff and when individuals go through stuff, you know, everybody deals with crap. Uh, uh, but I never said a word to these guys about anything I was going through, but they, they rose their own level to a level that propped me up. And so this, this is what makes coaching the best. Uh, because, uh, you know, players can learn from coaches, but certainly uh, coaches can learn from players. We want to thank and congratulate Dewan and Christian and Mitch and Jalen and Coach Self, Ochai and David and Remy. Thank you guys for joining us here all week. Congratulations. Uh,